we decided to write this commentary, which is based on the research that we've done over the past 20 years, because the individual studies themselves don't convey the full weight of the impact of this, this issue. And so by, by including the evidence from laboratory studies, biobehavioral surveys, ecological studies, and mathematical models into a one concise paper, then it summarizes everything and people get the full weight of all of the different evidence regarding this issue. The big point is that there's some syringes retain approximately a thousand times more blood after they're used and rinsed than other syringes. And when drug users use these syringes and share these syringes, they're much more likely to, con to, to transmit HIV than if they use the syringes that retain less blood. We develop mathematical models to look at the effects of switching people from the syringes that retain more blood to the syringes that retain less blood. And in those models, if you switch people over a period of five years from the syringes that retain more blood to the syringes that retain less blood, you could virtually eliminate uh, injection-related HIV epidemics in many countries around the world over a period of, of 20 years. Our models suggest that switching people from the syringes that retain more blood to the syringes that retain less blood could, uh, in just five countries, could avert over one million new infections in the next 20 years and save over nine billion dollars in medication costs alone. The most common syringes that retain less blood just are not available in all of the different configurations that people need to inject the drugs that they inject. So we can't just force those on people at this point or it would fail. We have to come up with, with alternatives that they can use to inject the drugs that they're using